So, over the past year, we've convened leaders, as I said, from all these different fields, and we've discussed how can the United States retain its leadership in medical innovation. And throughout these discussions, we've heard a common theme, that we've got to move forward with an aggressive medical innovation agenda that will get our economy back on track, that will facilitate the, worker, the work of scientists and innovators, and bring us market products that will address some of the world's most pressing economic challenges. Simply stated, we're failing to attract the public and private cooperation and investment necessary to fund the breakthroughs in innovation that will create jobs and ultimately cure devastating diseases. We are delaying the arrival to market of critical treatments and next generation therapies, and we're not doing enough to cultivate the next wave of scientific researchers. You need not look very far to see what's at stake. As the governor said right here in Delaware, the biopharmaceutical sector alone supports or provides nearly 30,000 jobs and generates $3.1 billion in gross state product and $1.7 billion in personal income. But let's not take Delaware, which is a leader. Let's go to Michigan, the auto state. Huge economic problems. Highest unemployment rate in the country today. The number of people in Michigan working in life sciences increased by more than 10% between 1999 and 2006, with average wages for those jobs in that period jumping by 30%. 60% of research dollars came into the state through federal grants, up from 54% just a decade ago. Let's go to California. Boy, wouldn't you hate to be the governor of California? <laughs> Whoa. Even the Terminator can't figure it out. The biomedical industry created approximately 7,000 new jobs between 2005 and 2006 alone and generated a 17% increase in revenue statewide. If Healthcare and life sciences were a bigger factor in California, their deficit would not be as huge a chasm as it already is. And I could go to many other states. I won't bore you. I think you get the picture. Earlier this year, we partnered with the research firm Battelle to interview experts, to do thought leaders, to talk to innovators outside the Beltway, all over the country, in an effort to identify and highlight the best public policy areas for a national agenda that was recently unveiled in Washington. What the Patel study shows is that there are four distinct challenges. There are many others, but four most important challenges across our whole medical enterprise. First, gaps between research and translation of medical innovation into new treatments. Second, shortfalls in private investment for company formation, research and development, and related manufacturing job growth. Third, a lack of consistency and predictability in FDA regulatory review and uncertainties in reimbursement and new standards caused by healthcare reform. And fourth, limitations in cultivating the innovators of the future. We're going to be meeting with members of Congress, folks in the Obama administration and state and regional officials as we are today, over the weeks ahead to highlight specific steps that must be taken in the near term to ensure that medical innovation becomes and remains a cornerstone of our economy. As part of this effort, we're calling on the Obama administration to give an appropriate federal office the responsibility to lead collaborative efforts to address these key challenges that we face. 
We believe the following areas to be priorities for the near term. First, we must form public-private partnerships that will drive translational research and bridge the valley of death. We all hear about the valley of death, and I had trouble kind of understanding it because I'm not a scientist, so I've talked to a lot of people. Finally, somebody gave me a football analogy that I could really understand. <laughs> so what they said was, NIH research gets you out of the end zone to the first 10-yard line. Now you've got to go 90 yards to take those new scientific discoveries to bedside so that you're really helping somebody and curing something and dealing with something. The problem is that 90-yard trip costs a drug or a biotech or a company billion, billion and a half, sometimes two billion dollars to go through the whole arduous process. And then when they get there to the end zone and they think they may have something, 90% of it fails. Wow, you're in a heck of a business. <laughs> man, oh man, you put all this money out, you do all this work, 90 yards, and then it, it fails. It's either it doesn't really treat the thing you're trying to treat or it's not safe or something's wrong with it and they have to throw it, you know, off to the side. They can't use it. And so we believe that this gap between the development and delivery of life-saving treatments is perhaps the most important thing that we have to address. It's not the only thing, but it's one of the most important things. Put simply, we're leaving too many of our greatest ideas and innovations in the laboratory without providing sufficient resources or mechanisms or infrastructure to bring them to the patients who need the most. And I believe that we got to start thinking outside the box. We got to we got to get out of the box we're in. And we've got to work with the FDA, we got to work with the NIH, we got to work with the private sector. We got to work with our laboratories to find ways to come together as we have in so many other areas in our country and find a quicker, faster, more efficient safer way through that valley of death so that we can get there. Second, let's create a right market environment that enables innovation to thrive. One immediate opportunity